Welcome back to the huddle. What's going on? I hope you've had a really good week and we are nearly halfway through the season already. There's a bit of news leading into round 12, so let's get straight into it. Despite picking up a glute injury, Sam Burgess has been named to start and it's also good to see Mahe Fanua back in the starting 17. Unfortunately though, Kakao has been named on the bench again. He could be a sell for a Fafita or a Tapao-like player as Kakao is not going to play around 13. Although Kakao has shown keeper-like status and performances before, so so he may be a hold till round 17. However, if he's only going to be on the bench from now on, it might be worth cashing in on him and getting a round 13 keeper. And he's made it back into the starting 17, an absolute slow burner, Nichols from the Rabbits. If he can hold a bench spot for round 13, he may produce 30 odd points, which will be really handy for that first buy round. And Brimson from the Titans, he's named to play his third game. He's got a negative break even there, so he should make a little bit of cash. He could be a great trade in for a Lockie Croker or Riley Jackson type player and that's one of the trades I'm thinking of making for this round. I've got two trade scenarios in my mind at the moment that I'm trying to decide what to do. The first scenario is trading out Lockie Croker and Riley Jacks to bring in Brimson and also Tamari Martin. This will free up around 300k which will enable me to get a couple of guns in maybe like for Fida or Gallon or Tapao next week. Now the main issue with Brimson is he doesn't play round 13 however he's going to make cash and he will provide an extra number in round 17. Now to Murray Martin does play around 13. He's got a break even of four and he's priced at around 182K. Now he hasn't been performing that well this year. He really hasn't been given many minutes. Last year he played 80 minutes in every game that he played and he averaged 49 points. So he definitely does have the potential to produce a decent score. He has a relative high coefficient of variance of around 43% from last year. 20% is usually good. 43% just means that he's really inconsistent. So he might get you about 10 points one week, but then he could get you around 70 points if he has a cracker of a game. There's definitely a bit of risk for both of these trade-ins though. It would only take a couple of rounds for them to get back-to-back -back 20s and the cash they might make you might end up losing. The second scenario would be to keep the trade of Riley Jacks to Tamari Martin. However, I'm tempted to wait till round 14 to bring in Brimson. I'd only miss one of his price rises. Lockie Croker's price won't change, so I could go Lockie Croker to Brimson in round 14. That would enable me this week to go Kakao to Marty to Pau. I'm about six grand short of bringing in Fafita and maybe with Gal and Lewis back in the squad Fafita's production might decrease however he has been going amazing at the moment but at 700k I just can't fit him in and there is this talk about Origin I'd be surprised honestly if he did get selected for Origin so I'll wait till next week and see if I can get him in so what I'm leaning to right now is Jax to Tamari Martin and Kakao to Marty to Pau to Pau's been averaging 64 points this year let's hope he keeps those offload numbers up he does have a relatively high break even of 83 but he can hopefully probably hit that he won't leak too much cash and hopefully he punches out a solid score when Jake Javojevic is probably gone for origin duties. Now some of you have probably heard or read about this Denver test in between round 15 and 16 when New Zealand are versing England. With all the travel time and playing at high altitude over there in America in Denver the recovery time for those players may be increased. So just be aware that those players like Widdop, SJ, Sergis, Marty Tapao, those England players and New Zealanders, they might get rested for round 16, but we'll talk a bit more about that Denver test leading into it. Hopefully you've got some players in your team to cover them, but we'll chat about that later. So as usual, let me know what you think of these trades. What do you think I should go with? Scenario one, where I'm just going to build the bank, get two cheapy halves in, or is it worth getting into power right now, maximize those numbers for round 13? But let me know what trades you're thinking about making for your team, and let me know about your vice captain and captain combos. What I'm thinking for this week, looking at the starting 17, I want to go Tom Trevojevic against the Raiders. Turbo punched out a 158 point score in round four against the Raiders. He now averages 96 points against them in his career. This game is the second game of the round. It makes it a bit awkward now because Gerbo, who I usually captain, is in the same game. Teddy, I'd like to captain against the Titans, but I can't captain Teddy from the bench. At the moment, I've got the captain armband on Taumalolo. He's averaging 65 points, but he does only average 53 points against the Storm. Cook is also an option, however, I did captain him a little while ago after he tunned up and then he only got 50 odd points, so it is pretty tough usually for players statistically to go back to back 100 point games. 
but maybe Cook will be a solid option. Let me know whether you think I should go Cook or Tamalolo as my captain. Thanks to everyone who's getting involved in the comment section, and thanks to everyone who has subscribed. We're a decent amount over the 300 mark. I hope you see a green arrow this week. I hope you smash it in your head-to-head, -head. and don't forget to check those team lists one hour before the game. Let's go.